this up. We're going to deal with sequential statements in Python. We've got a bunch of calculations we're going to have to do here. Let's go ahead and start this up. And they don't give us a whole lot other than a lot of instructions they want us to do. So salary has a value. And it's set to $1,250. That's a floating decimal type. So we'll call it a float. The number of dependents. It's a whole number that's an integer. Now, I want to go through and deal with everything that we've got to deal with. Control C. I want to put a sales tax up there. Federal tax. Dependent deduction. Salaries there. And let's do take home pay. Set each one of them to be equal to zero. So I've declared and initialized each one of these variables. I have to declare it and initialize it before I can use it. Okay, So it has to exist prior to me doing anything with it. All right. Calculate sales tax here. Now let's take sales tax equals And they say sales tax is 6.5%. 6.5% of what? Your salary. So we'll say salary times 0 0.065. Okay, so I've come up with that calculation. And let's come down to federal tax. Federal tax is 28%. Let me copy that line and I'll reuse it. Programmers love reusing work. 0.28 is the percentage for federal tax. There we go. Federal tax is salary times 0.28. Dependent deduction. Now let's see what they want. Calculate dependent deductions. Dependent deduction is at 2.5% of the employee's salary for each dependent. Okay. So your deductions and the deduction equals. And it was that salary times 2.5%.025. Now go ahead and I'll wrap that up in a parentheses. So there's the deduction for one dependent. And we'll go ahead and multiply that by the number of dependents that the employee may have. So we need to calculate the total withholding here. Total withholding is state tax plus, you know what, let's just copy that calculation they gave us. What is it? It's total withholding. Now I haven't declared that up top. So we'll go ahead and we'll include that. Oh. Total withholding. 
Folden equals zero. I'll come down here on line 23. Total withholding equals sales tax plus federal tax plus however much is being deducted for dependents. So now take home pay. I'm going to put a little space there. A little down below what we're about to put in. So my take home pay, let's go ahead and copy the variable name, paste it there. And what is it equivalent to now? It's equivalent to, and they gave us the calculation, salary minus total withholding. So all we've done is declare and initialize each of these variables. And then we came up with a calculation to assign a new value or whatever it is that makes up what that value should be in that variable location. When it's all said and done, we will then output somebody's salary and what their take home pay is. So let's run the code and see what it does. Well, there it is. It's all in there, but let's not jump the gun because we're only to step three. And at step three, we did what we were supposed to do. Step four, it says we need to accept from the user salary and num dependence. So those two values are going to be user defined. Salary and num, de num dependence will be user-defined values. So let's come down to line 9. I'm going to put a comment in here. Input from user. Put some blank space after it. And what are they going to input? They're going to input those two values. Salary and num dependence. So let's go ahead and initialize them at zero because I don't know what value is going to be in there when the user inputs it. So at this point there's zero and we come down here we're going to acquire those values from the user. So salary, I don't know what it's going to be, but I do know where it's coming from. Now, it's coming from the user as input. I'm going to receive a string of characters from the user. I then need to convert it into a float numeric value so I can do something with it mathematically. So let's start out with float open parentheses and it gave me the closing at the same time and I'm going to type in input open parentheses okay let's copy that little segment of code and paste it down as what's being put into num dependence so salary is whatever's being input converted to a float put it in salary Whatever's being input, turn it into a float, put it in num dependence. That could be an integer for num dependence. But we're just keeping it simple and making everything floats just for what we're doing here. So the input function requires something of you. If you're going to call it, you need to know its name, what it requires from you, what form that requirement must be in, and does it give you anything back? Input, yes, it does give us something back. What it requires from us is a prompt. And the prompt, it, we'll put double quotes there. And by hitting the double quotes, it gave us opening and closing. Let's prompt the user. Please enter your salary amount, colon, space. 
And I'm going to copy that exact same line and paste it into the other input parentheses. Please enter your number of dependents. Mount. So I put a colon and a space after each one of those prompts. And you'll see why in a second. So I prompted the user for input. The user then input the value. That value is passed to the float function, which converted that string that was input into a floating decimal point. And then we stored that value in the salary variable. Let's go ahead and run the code and see what we've got. Please enter your salary amount. Hey, that's line 10. So we went through each one of these lines sequentially and assigned or initialized the value of zero to each one of these variables. And now here I am on the right side and it says, please enter your salary amount. Let's go ahead and enter 1250.0 as they've instructed. Enter. Enter your number of dependents. Well, they say two. Enter. Those values were passed, stored, converted, and then stored into the variables. And then we came down the next line, performed a calculation, assigned a value. Output. There it is. Now, did we output the way we were supposed to be outputting? Exactly the same way. Let's see if, in fact, just because it appears right, is it right? Let's test it. And when we test it, Cody actually enters the input to interact with our code. And it says we are two of two passed. Let's go ahead and grade it, see where we stand, review, and submit. 100%. We're golden. I'll see you in the next one.